Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the January 10th special meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. I'd like to call this meeting to order at this time. A little bit of housekeeping before we start the meeting. A reminder to committee members to keep your audio on mute unless you are speaking. Uh, pursuant to Government Code Section 54953E and the recommendation of the Health Officer of County of Sonoma, Art and Public Places Committee will be participating in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and noted on the agenda. Eileen, will you please review how the public may comment and participate in today's meeting? Yes. The committee appreciates the public's participation. For those members of the public who submitted written comment, those comments have been attached to the agenda reviewed by the committee and are accessible to the public. Members of the public are allowed one comment per item, which includes written, phone, and in-person comments. A single email constitutes a comment on an item, so additional emails, phone messages, or in-person comments cannot be added. Members of the public who wish to speak during item three, public comment, or during any of the scheduled items may do so by utilizing the raised hand feature, or if calling in, please press star nine. Individuals will then be given the ability to address the committee. Thank you. Great. Eileen, will you next please take roll call? Yes. Um, Member Baumgartner? Present. Member Adzerian? Yes, your I, I see you. Vice Chair Jones Carter? Present. Chair Kiefer? Present. Please let the record reflect that Member Fuentes and Member Nathanson are unable to attend today's meeting. Next item, item three, we've got public comment. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on the agenda, but are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when each item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Eileen, are there any public comments waiting? We have no raised hands at this time, nor were there any voicemails. Um, and as, um, oh, pardon, me, pardon me, Eileen, uh, it looks like David Harris wishes to make a public comment oh. in non-agenda items. Thank you, I will, I apologize. I will, David, if you could hold on just one moment. And yes, I pushed the unmute button, so am I being heard? You are, thank you. Are okay. you able to see the screen? My name is David Harris, and I've been a longtime resident of Santa Rosa uh, and uh, have served on uh, city commissions. Uh, I was actually, uh, for a time, the representative of redevelopment on art and public places. So I do have a little history. But I want to uh, raise my concern about the climate crisis. And it's something that you would not normally think is uh, directly related to public art. But I want to raise the issue that I believe we need to, if we're going to meet our goals and protect the future of, for our future generations, that we need to be taking every action we can to communicate to the public the urgency of the climate crisis. And that leads me to think that even public art to, should be thinking about what it can do to motivate the public to change um, behaviors in the interest of protecting the climate. And uh, certainly knowing that our large uh, source of carbon footprint is transportation, I would, uh, I'm raising this question for your long-term consideration that how might public art be used to affect the public in the near term, in the medium term, and in the long term in their uh, use of alternatives to our long-standing fossil fuel industry. And uh, you know, what that might mean I've just started to think about it but certainly I do have a specific interest in uh, communications that can be made 
uh, to the highways. And uh, uh, there is a, a project in process for a 101 overcrossing that I believe offers an opportunity to communicate to multiple generations who travel underneath that. It is a high exposure. And, you know, the efforts that took so many years to get public transit in the form of SMART, uh, you know, started back before 1990. And now with the compounding effect of COVID, I would say we have to be concerned that um, will another ballot measure pass? And we just need to do everything we can to raise the visibility of what alternatives we do have, because most people are living unaware of a lot of the alternatives that do exist. And I would raise this challenge to art and public places to consider that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heron. We have an additional commenter, um, Mr. Jack Swearingen. And Mr. Swearingen, um, are you able, I have given you permission to talk. Are you able to see the timer? I do and I am. Uh, can you okay. hear me? Yes, we can. I am the local chair of a citizens group called Friends of Smart. And I'm picking up where David Harris paused because uh, uh, public art is an environmental uh, issue, of course. It has to do with the aesthetic part of our environment. But David brought up the other aspects, especially environmental, but there's also economic. And Friends of Smart's mission is to help the smart rail and trail be successful and that means getting people out of their private vehicles and onto active or public transportation and this is a chance to do that by promoting making visible the alternatives so this is a perfect place to combine sense of place with sense of what's out there and i have actually developed a cartoon form of sign showing snoopy and woodstock riding a tandem bicycle and then signs pointing to the smart station from both directions. And what a great publicity opportunity. Not just, hey, we're the home of Snoopy, but also we have a smart train that goes through here and goes where you're going. So uh, I will send that to all of you after this webinar is complete, just for your entertainment. And the purpose, of course, is to broaden the idea from just the aesthetic part of environmental protection, but also the environmental and the economic and our global planet. Thank you. Thank you. There are no additional hands raised at this time. Great, thank you. At this time, I'll move on to item four, our scheduled items. Item 4.1, Unum sculpture, Unum sculpture recommended words and languages. Staff will present the recommended words and languages for the Unum, for the sculpture Unum by Blessing Hancock, approved for installation in Courthouse Square. The presentation will include the project background and collaborative process used to collect the submissions from the community. Uh, great, thank you, um, Kristen, and hello, everyone. I am Tara Thompson, the city's arts and culture manager. I'm here today to present this item along with Jessica Rasmussen, our arts specialist. And I wanted to mention that, as you know, David Ward has left the city and is no longer working on this project as a project manager. And so Jessica has been um, stepping in to assist with this project and is here today um, to chime in uh, on the presentation. So um, I want to start off by, um, next slide, please. Uh, I want to start off by giving a little bit of background about this piece, the community engagement and the opportunities for the public to provide input throughout this process. Uh, shown here are the artist renderings of the proposed design, Unum, by Blessing Hancock. 
um, proposed and approved for Courthouse Square, the north side of Courthouse Square. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the actual design and the artist's intention um, on the next slide. But just to start off, sorry, go back, go back. Um, still want to talk about this one. Yeah, thank you. Um, this project was initiated in August 2019 with the formation of an advisory committee who developed project goals, community engagement process, selection criteria, and recommended a draft project plan to the Art and Public Places Committee. The Art and Public Places Committee approved the project plan and the request for qualifications for this project in November of that same year, 2019. And the project plan outlines the description, goals, site considerations, selection process, including selection criteria, budget, stakeholders, and timeline. A preliminary survey was also launched at this time for the community to provide input on the development of the project. Approximately 250 survey responses were collected at that time and the results were shared with the finalist artist. A selection panel was formed for the project responsible for reviewing application materials using the established criteria, the selecting of the finalists, evaluating the finalist proposals, um, using the established criteria and selecting one artist for the project, then recommending their selection to the Art and Public Places Committee. Once the selection panel had identified finalists for the project, a second survey was launched to solicit input from the community on the finalist designs. Over 700 responses were collected and the survey results were considered by the selection panel during their final selection process, along with the established selection criteria. Throughout this project, information was shared via the City Connections newsletter, the City and Out There Santa Rosa social media posts, print media articles, including the Press Democrat, and public meetings. The Art and Public Places Committee approved Blessing Hancock and her proposal UNUM at the December 2020 meeting. Next slide, please. This is um, the proposal language that was submitted by the artist and approved uh, by the Art and Public Places Committee describing the piece unum, meaning Latin for oneness or together, and is proposed to be a signature artwork that places emphasis on innovation, diversity, and engagement as leading values of Santa Rosa. Inspired by the unified old courthouse square, the sculpture embraces themes of welcoming and inspiration while also relaying the Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity throughout its text collected through a community engagement process. During the day, the sculpture casts shadows of the words onto the square using sunlight, whereas in the early morning and evening hours, it will be illuminated by LED light fixtures mounted within the sculpture, creating a soft, diffused glow within the structure's form. The community engagement um, outreach for the text on the sculptures uh, will be collected through public engagement opportunities with APPC to identify selected words that will represent inherent values to Santa Rosa. The dimensions will be approximately 12 feet high by 15 feet wide, and the materials will be water, jet cut, stainless steel, and LED lights. Next slide. Um, this slide talks about the engagement process to collect the words for the piece. So beginning in late spring 2021 and throughout the summer, the artist team and the city worked together to collect the community outreach, uh, I'm sorry, to design the community outreach portion of this project. We asked key representatives to join a community advisory group for this engagement and included individuals from the Sonoma County Library, the city's Office of Community Engagement, Raices Collective, 100 Black Men of Sonoma County, the Museum of Sonoma County, and the city's Community Advisory Board. Two of the members also participated on the original selection panel for the project and um, brought uh, familiarity and continuity with the project. And those people were Jeff Nathanson and Leslie Graves. We asked this group to design how we approach the community with this opportunity, how best to facilitate the process to invite people to participate. And once responses were gathered to review and recommend the results to the Art and Public Places Committee. 
This group also looked at the most common languages spoken in Santa Rosa and discussed translating key responses. The engagement opportunity was presented both online via a survey and in person, which was collected through a flyer that the public could fill out and return to us. We also uh, partnered with the city's Rec and Parks Department to run a youth engagement activity through summer camps to collect responses. The community advisory group for this engagement also made the following recommendations to include a land acknowledgement on site to accompany the artwork on a plaque and to include Southern Pomo and Coast Miwok languages to acknowledge the land and the people the, people the artwork will be on. Next slide, please. Working with the community advisory group and drawing from the original project goals of providing the community with a prominent artistic symbol that reflects the Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity. And that is a forward thinking and expresses the innovation, diversity and engagement of the community. The following prompts were used in the outreach with the community. The general population survey on the left had these four questions. And the youth engagement on the right had these four questions. Approximately 400 total responses were collected. Over 300 responses were collected from the online survey and over 50 from the youth um, flyers. And then about 50 more from artists, the artist team um, doing targeted outreach to community stakeholder groups. Next slide, please. This first chart on the left shows the top responses to prompts in the survey from both the youth and general public outreach. So this is a combined list of the top appearing words. Each time one of these words appeared in the responses, either in the form of a phrase or a single word, it was tallied and compiled onto this list. The list of languages in the green table on the right are the top 15 languages spoken in San Rosa as included in the city's language assistance plan, which has original data from the US Census Bureau. As I said before, the community advisory group for this project also recommended including Southern Pomo and Coast Miwok to acknowledge and respect the Southern Pomo and Miwok land and existing communities in Santa Rosa. These recommended languages were identified through a data-driven process to be as equitable as possible and represent San Rosa's residents. There are, of course, other languages spoken in the community that are not represented here. However, as the data shows, these are the 15 most used data, uh, languages. Other languages suggestions have been made by the community for consideration. Some of you will hear or have already read in the public comments and I just wanted to state that as of earlier today, the following languages have been suggested. Um, and some of them appear in public comment. Some of them were made in other forms, Hebrew or Arabic, Japanese, Greek, and Russian. The artist has shared that approximately 1000 total words will be able to fit on the sculpture. The recommendation we are presenting here today is to use the words seen here, translated in each language seen here, for approximately 380 words, um, and then to repeat them as many times that will fit on the sculpture. This is a large sculpture, and so having um, the words show up in multiple places in all of the languages, I think will provide a better experience for a viewer. Next slide, please. So the recommendation we are making here today is to approve the recommended words and languages to be included in UNAM's design for the Imagine Art and Old Courthouse Square project. Um, I just wanted to go over a few options for today um, as there's been a lot of conversation about it um, to approve the recommended list of words and languages as stated or to approve the recommended words and languages with changes and additions as voted on and determined by the committee or to table the item until the next meeting. Uh, the next steps are to um, provide the artist with an approved list of words and all the translations so that she can finalize the artwork design and engineering. That is the next deliverable that is due to the city. After the final design and engineering are approved, the artwork would be fabricated 
and um, the installation is expected this next spring. Um, that is all that I have today for my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Do any members have any questions for Tara or Jessica? Uh, seeing none, I, oh, Anne, do you have a question? Great, go ahead, you're on mute. Um, could I ask a question about the suggestions for the extra five languages? Is this the time I could ask that question? Yeah, I just was curious, did those just come in randomly from people that saw this and responded or is it coming through some sort of vetting that this would be the next five or something like that? You know, the, in the um, order of most found in our community or just like, I just wondered how that list came together besides the one we saw. Um, the other suggestions have come forward from community members who have seen the list of recommend, recommended languages and felt that these needed to be added in addition to those. They are not from any um, US Census Bureau data or other language assistance plan document. They are uh, suggestions from the community. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, question, would you be able to pull up the chart, the slide that you had with the chart of the words and the languages? Ellen should be able to do that, so stand by. Great, thank you. A uh, question I had was, is the intent for all of these words to be translated in all 15 languages? Uh, I, I remember you said that there was about 350 words. I, I'm not doing the math in my head right now, but wondering if that is where that number came from. Yes, that is correct. Uh, if we were to suggest the addition of a, of a couple other languages, would there be the opportunity to select maybe one or two words to be translated instead of the entire list? Um, yes, that's at the committee's discretion. Um, I would recommend, though, that there's there's room on the sculpture. So um, what what that would effectively do is if additional languages are added and all of the words are translated into those additional uh, languages, that that adds you know, a hundred perhaps or up to two hundred more words. Um, there's still room for that. There would just be less repetition throughout the whole sculpture. So um, that that's one way to look at it. I think the other um, thing that we are concerned about as well from um, an equity standpoint, I guess, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, we were looking at data in terms of one of the most common languages spoken in Santa Rosa as a second language or as a primary language, right? Uh, so we were looking at this, um, and I, I have to say, you know, we've had some discussion about some discomfort on um, adding languages based on personal preference or a desire from a personal perspective, um, because not everybody has that opportunity. Uh, and um, so uh, I would caution that uh, because it would open it up, I think, um, to anybody or uh, either I want my language, I want this language, um, and then it could potentially open up to, but how come I didn't know that we could add languages? So we're looking for something to um, land on, uh, one. And two, I have to say, I think, um, you know, there, there is a thing of this being from 2019 that we could review the language list, um, but there is a second thing of adding, um, uh, I don't wanna say willy-nilly, but sort of willy-nilly adding languages um, to the list based on desi personal desire. Oh, Melanie, you're on mute. Um, I, this is sort of a discussion point because um, my concern also is that, you know, every project that we that we have, we set up a advisory committee. It's a broad group of people. 
they have specific criteria that they're working on, they're empowered to make the decisions. And then, um, you, you know, if someone's not happy with the end result, why would people want to continue to do this if their work is disregarded? Um, so I'm, that's a concern of, for me that, um, you know, people who were on this committee made the decisions, we empowered them and they came to a consensus and you're never going to get a hundred percent of the people to agree on anything. There was even controversy about the selection of this particular sculpture. So, um, you know, where do we draw the line between um, when we get some pushback of, of uh, making sure that the people who we are, who are appointed um, are doing a good job and that we stand behind their decisions. So I would ask that it, um, we stick as much as we can to questions right now, and then um, and then uh, there'll be public comment after that. So any any other questions, I am happy to answer, or Rice or Jessica can. Assist. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, I just wanted to remind. First, we're doing questions, then we'll have public comment, and then we'll need a motion before we can have a more thorough discussion. Do any committee members have any questions about what our, our potential actions are today? Um, I'm sorry, what was your question? Does anyone have a question about what our action could be today? Tara um, outlined three options that we could go with. If we wanna hear those again, um, that might be good for uh, us to think about while we're hearing public comment. Uh, yeah, I think right now it's really, te yeah, technical questions or follow-up questions on the presentation. So anything that anyone needs any clarity on before you, you as a group move into hearing public comments and then having your own discussion. Anne, go ahead. You're on mute. Um, just want to ask a question again about the signage and the um, explanation at the site for people looking, is this going to potentially, if we were to go with the plan that the committee has outlined and the, and the languages they chose based on research, would that be explained in the comments or the plaque or whatever we're doing that, um, how the, any process behind it, or will it just strictly stand on its own? That's a great question. Um, we have talked about adding additional information to this plaque uh, for this piece because it will have a lot of thought and intention behind it. However, a lot of times a plaque isn't the best space in terms of amount of space for adding so much information. So um, we would be working on some kind of design for a plaque that would include some information and then um, either a QR code or a link that someone can get to our website and get more information about the project. Just to follow up, I, I wasn't only strictly speaking about a plaque, I did say that, but I meant just the mess, the general messaging around it, the way we presented the public relation that goes out and explaining. And then I assume a project like this is gonna get some press is would all of this process continue to follow the presentation of piece. Yes, I think when this piece is kind of unveiled to the community in a variety of ways that we, we are planning on, there would be some context provided in terms of what the goals of the project um, were from the beginning and how the process identified this artist and these words and these languages. I think that's an important part to understand about this piece. Another question I have, um, will the selected words, when they are repeated, is there an opportunity for them to be different sizes or will they all kind of be uniform um, throughout the piece? I believe they are all the same font size, so to speak, because of what is required for 
um, uh, keeping the structural integrity of the uh, stainless steel material by cutting out all of the negative space, essentially, which will be the words. Um, so the artist has indicated that that is why she needs this approved uh, list of words with all the translations ahead of time to make those final design and engineering um, decisions. And then that will be the next piece that comes back to us for approval. Melanie? Yeah, so how long, how much longer, um, what's the timeline here? So if she gets the word, if the words are get, given to the artists tomorrow, what's the timeline for getting this project implemented? And are we on time? Are we meeting our timeline? Our timeline has been delayed a few times for various reasons of the pandemic, uh, first and foremost, but we've also had fires and the artist has also had delays on her end due to fabrication issues with fabricators and um, materials. And so um, there's there, I think that our original timeline has been completely thrown out the window, um, but for a variety of other reasons. I think any delays at this point will delay, but um, you know, getting a sense of the timing of that is a little bit difficult. I think at this point, we are on track to install this spring, um, probably late spring. <laughs> and if there's delays with approving uh, today, then that would just push that out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of unfair to use our original timeline for the project, which, ha which had installation happening now, like January, February. So that's, that's not happening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing that there are no more questions or questions to clarify with staff, I would like to move on to public comment for this item. Eileen, mm -hmm. can you lead us through that? Yes, we do have two individuals to raise their hand for public comments. Um, the first individual is David Harris. David, if you have been allowed to speak, if you could confirm your ability to see the screen, that would be wonderful. Yes, I have uh, hit the unmute. Uh, so I spoke in the open comments and uh, you know, since you can't see me, I'm going to tell you that I'm in my 70s and spent a lot of time uh, in school and, uh, and uh, worked around the world. So I unfortunately had the opportunity to, to learn multiple languages, uh, fluency in three, and exposure to many others. And uh, this is very complex. Uh, now you start talking about all those languages. Uh, it's a pretty daunting task be, when you need to do it either in negative or positive punch out. And, uh, but it, that's what hasn't been touched on is their different writing systems. And I felt, gee, how did I get to all this education and not have uh, exposure to the different writing systems. Uh, we can largely think that everything's written in a, a, a Roman-based uh, alphabet, and that is not true. And certainly for this list of languages, the uh, Mandarin, Arabic, <laughs> Thai, uh, and, uh, Arab, and the South Asian, and man, uh, I mean, has the plan been to put in a, a Romanized uh, equivalent? Uh, to those words in those languages or actually use the writing systems that they are originally written in. Um, you know, they're gonna be translated, so, uh, because they're gonna appear in the other languages. But uh, I, I think that's a, it's a very complex task to uh, illustrate these other languages, Korean uh, and, and Chinese in particular, uh, when you have this constraint of it being either positive or negative. Um, but, you know, I generally I like challenges like that. The complexity wouldn't bother me. But there's the other thing of unintended, you know, it's, it's very difficult to model this well enough to know whether there might be when it's lighted projections onto the ground that uh, 
that you have a different type of maybe of uh, graffiti by people blocking out things to have it project uh, something other than what is originally there. This is a complex piece of art that it, that people can walk up to and do things. I really, uh, you know, you, you can't imagine what all the possibilities are until it's actually there. I mean, the the first example I heard of uh, things like that though was. Uh, somebody studying on the east coast and there was a big neon shell sign and of course one day the s went out well you now had a different word uh, projected across a whole city and uh, this isn't going to project that far but there are just a lot of possibilities for things that we cannot foresee being uh, illustrated out of this lovely piece of art thank you mr harris I just want to take a moment to remind everyone, members of the public are allowed one comment per item, which includes written, phone, and in-person comments. A single email constitutes a comment on an item, so additional emails, phone messages, or in-person comments cannot be added. Um, with that said, um, the next individual um, that will be speaking is Thomas. Thomas, um, you are allowed to speak. If you could confirm your ability to see the screen, that would be wonderful. Hi, um, I'm having a problem with my equipment here. Um, uh, it doesn't seem to be, I can't really hear you very well, but I, I hope you can hear me. We, we can hear you. And okay. I'll go ahead and start the timer. Uh, I was hoping to be on the call earlier for the uh, items not on the agenda. I was also hoping to comment on this one. Um, uh, what I didn't quite, I'm not sure I heard all of the uh, other additional languages, but I was thinking that uh, Hindu, there's a lot of Indian people uh, in the community, as I'm aware, and uh, it's a very big country with a lot of people that speak that language. And it might be uh, beneficial to be an outreach, you know, a, a kind of a, uh, an opportunity. Um, and then of course I did hear the other language which is Russian and there's a great uh, history of Russian people here in Sonoma County and the speaking of Russian and of course uh, Fort Ross and, and all of that. So um, I would hope you'd be open to that. Uh, the issue that I was hoping to address on the uh, public comment, not on the agenda, I hope that there's an opportunity for me to take the rest of my time for that, which was uh, about the uh, overcrossing of uh, Edwards and Elliot and the art on that. And I hope that uh, there's an opportunity to speak to that. And uh, particularly, I believe that uh, there has been some uh, proposals to put a bit of illustrated art, not exactly uh, something indicating the train of SMART in order to uh, support SMART. I believe that having been involved for a very long time since the middle 90s uh, involved in SMART, that we are what people call a death spiral. Uh, the problem is that they paid too much for some things and, and in the process they may have to cut back service. They've already cut back service because of the pandemic. They may get some funding, which is great to improve the service. Uh, it may not come back to the service that we've had. And that's what they call a death spiral. When the service starts being cut back in order to preserve capital and so on. And uh, then people ride less. And, and we really have to turn that around. It's, it's a make or break. And that's why we need this on that overcrossing and I hope you can consider that. It can be made art, uh, it is very important and it's a life or death issue for SMART really. We don't, we seem to have some years, but we have a lot of resistance to overcome. I wanna thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Thomas. The next individual will be Paula Simon. Uh, 
And Paula, you should be able to speak. Please let me know if you're able to see the screen. I can see the screen. Wonderful, please proceed. My name is Paula Simon. I am somebody who did participate in uh, the outreach process and voting. I, um, I want to just ask a question about the languages. I, my professional background is in community relations, just so you know. Um, the, the list that you used, um, the learning for the learning assistance, uh, the language assistance plan that you noted on the screen looks at um, limited English proficiency. Um, and, and that's a big part. And, those, and I'm not sure that limited English proficiency is really um, the marker of diversity. And I just want to think about how that, understand a little bit more about how that list and those languages were decided. I see the list, I'm looking at the list, and I see that they correlate. But I'm not sure that that's really um, as broad as this community or as reflective of the community, because just if you are a limited language or you want request something or ask for another language doesn't necessarily mean that you um, speak another language or another language has meaning or identity. And I think this is all about language as part of identity. So I just wanna make sure that when you consider the list, um, I noticed that for example, Japanese is not on the list, but there's a large, community of Japanese speakers in this community. So I just am, wanna be mindful that the list is really reflective of the total community and not just a segment of the community that perhaps speaks another language as a first language. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. While the name is listed as Asher Shepard, the next speaker will be Ann Shepard. And Anne, um, if you could confirm your ability to uh, see the screen, please. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with what Paula just said. And I would like to encourage you to please uh, postpone final decision uh, until the next meeting you have so that the... Um, other languages can be considered seriously. That's basically it. And thank you so much thank for you. your comment. There are no additional hands raised at this time. How are you doing okay? Is it great? Thank you, Eileen. All right, at this time, I will close public comment. I'll bring it back to our committee. Uh, at this time, we would need to get a motion on the table uh, before we can proceed with the discussion. I just, if I could chime in really quickly, I just wanted to suggest that given the public comment regarding the languages, that one other option for today for the committee to consider would be to move forward with approving the list of words um, but table the approval of languages until there can be more um, research or information gathering and we can come back to you at the next meeting with that. Yeah, and um, on that, just as you consider that, um, you know, there are a number of things that are true in our community. Anti-Semitism is true in our community, right? Um, you know, other uh, uh, issues that we're dealing with are true in our community. Um, and, and um, you know, as staff, you know, there's tremendous value in the feedback that, we're, that we were given today in writing um, daily as we walk the, you know, the streets of our city um, on what unity looks like for the community and language is really important. So that separation of words versus language is good. And this will give us a moment to go back because we, we can review the data. And there's one thing about data um, and the logistics of how to be inclusive, knowing there are some barriers within the structure itself, right? Um, and then we can come back to the committee with, um, with uh, a sort of more defined way of what the, what the languages are, whether it be most commonly spoken um, or whatever it might be. But it gives us a moment to look at that in a different way. Yeah. 
if I have a question. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bit confused. It gives the Art and Public Places Committee time. It gives the uh, Community staff. Advisory Committee. It gives the staff who... Right. It would give staff a moment to that it's not just based on these are the most commonly spoken second languages or first languages or, um, you know, languages spoken within um, Santa Rosa. Um, you know, it is from 2019 and we can review what that, um, what the criteria of the languages are, um, is should it just be the list um, based on the, um, I forget what that list is called, um, but it's the language requirements for the city, right? Should it be that or, um, or should it, there be other uh, considerations? Yeah, I think that that's what it does is it gives staff time to prepare alternate ways of looking at language opportunities for this project. So what, what was our initial approach, which was to identify the most commonly spoken languages as self-identified through US Census Bureau data, um, in Santa Rosa would be to say, okay, that is from a plan the city drafted in 2019. We can look at that, see if there's updated data or see if there's another way we can categorize um, how people identify through use of language in our community that would be providing an additional lens of viewing this information. And to be clear, that is your option. Uh, if you would like staff to do that, we can do that. So we're just giving you options on um, either going together with um, languages and words, separate with words and asking us to review it, that's up to the committee. I think it would be helpful if our committee could view that slide again with the recommended words and then the languages of Santa Rosa. And then um, Kristen, I think you do need to do the, um, or Chair Kiefer, sorry, the, um, the motion so that you can have the general discussion. Great, thanks for the reminder. I make a motion. Go ahead, Melanie. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the um, words and language as stated. Um, the advisory committee took on the task of following the criteria that was set up and established. I believe they did a thorough job with that. And um, so I'm making that motion. Can I get a second? Second. We then. can't have a discussion. <laughs> Sorry, did we get a second from Nathan? What, 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 could you just repeat that one more time? Sorry. I made a motion to approve it as, did, as stated so that we can have a discussion so that the words and the language that were presented are approved and we can have a discussion if it is second. I'll second that motion. Great, thank you. We can move to a discussion now at this point. Would anyone like to kick off the discussion? I'll reserve my comments for the last. And I confess, I can't see everyone on the same screen. So if you're raising your hand. Anne, please go ahead. I am feeling unsure about proceeding ahead and just pushing by all of this information without another look at the, um, the list and how it came about. And if there's a, another list or I, I would like another another pass by the staff. So I, I wouldn't be approving both things today. That's my gut right now. So I'm just gonna lay that out. Just, it was, it's more complex than I thought it was coming in and I don't feel ready to vote it through. Is that the kind of discussion I can have right now? That, okay, I just wanna make sure I'm not saying too long thing at the wrong time. Thanks for kicking that off. Um, I, I can weigh in a little bit myself. Um, I, I agree with Anne. This item is a bit more complex than I had originally thought it to be when I received the information. Um, and I, 
I'm not sure um, uh, about approving the list of languages as currently written. Um, I do like the idea of going forward with a unified consensus on, on our words. Um, I do acknowledge that at this point, the information that we have in front of us did accomplish the tasks that uh, Tara had stated of what they had set out to do. It gathered recommended words from a community uh, outreach opportunity, both online and in person. Um, I applaud the city for that effort. And um, as in terms of the list of languages from Santa Rosa, that really was a point in time um, survey or capturing of the languages uh, as reported by the US Census. And um, I, I am cognizant of how uh, big of a focal point this piece will be sitting in the heart of Courthouse Square. And I want to be very mindful of um, that, that Courthouse Square was designed to be the living room of our community. And as such, it should be a welcoming and celebratory space for all of our community members and would be amiss if uh, our, our piece the, the piece that we're speaking about today um, had a hand in creating any further factions or disfranchising um, uh, from, from a feeling of a, a strong community, uh, especially when the, the piece is so focused on um, creating a sense of unity and community within our space. Um, I do really like the words Unity, community, people, diversity, kindness, neighborhood, city, safety, respect, um, love, peace, care, resilience, family, equality, equity, belonging, and friendship. I think that's a great list of words, and I, I, I currently don't have any additions to those or, or any suggestions. I, I think that the public outreach uh, effort was was very complete in that. So I, I applaud staff. Thank you for putting this together. Melanie. Yeah, I, I just reiterate my point that I just, I have a concern about disregarding what the community has said that they want. And um, because that's our charge. And um, it, we sent this out, we got support from, uh, not support, we got input from various groups. And I, I do have an issue with um, six people or eight people coming in and uh, at the end of the process and um, derailing this project not derailing it, delaying it. So it's, you know, my two cents. Yeah, I, I am muted. My feeling is that uh, my role here is to ratify a process and my, you know, personal sort of I don't know, whatever sort of aesthetic paradigms I tend to operate on independently really have no bearing on this. It's a question of the process and we are at the end of that process and it's a yes or no vote. So Chair Kiefer, I think what you can do is, um, you know, there's a there's a motion on the floor put forward by Vice Chair Jones Carter. Um, and so if nobody is going to um, put for and seconded by member uh, as Darren, I believe, um, if no one will be putting forward a second um, motion or asking for a friendly amendment, then I believe the motion on the floor stands. No, 
Hi, Anne. Yes. Um, I just I, I I see both sides of this. I I totally agree with you, um, Melanie and Nathan. I'm I'm always I'm a much more kind of as a personality. I agree. I'm I'm going with my own gut and emotion by pausing because I have seen us pause before. This is not. I don't feel like we always are operating on a well, this is the way it is. And we're here just to kind of stamp. I feel like we actually do talk about things and we give ourselves a moment to breathe sometimes when we need it. And so I'm not asking for a long break, but I, I even sense from what, and maybe I'm intuiting and it's not true, but I'm sensing the staff wouldn't mind a day or two to kind of take another look at this and get us some more info. I'm sorry, I know it talks, it, it prolongs things and I don't like, I've been on committees and had them question. I didn't like it either. So I hear you on that. So, so our next meeting is February 7th. Right. So I know that's, that's, and that means unless we were to meet closer for some reason, quickly. Um, yeah, I agree. It's like the next standing meeting. Yes. And I'm not asking to add meetings. This is not my motivation to prolong. Although I'm just seeing that there's kind of a dead end. Either we go and we, we just close it down and we say, there's sorry, it was closed and it never was open. Or we say, um, I just felt there was some question about it. So that's what I was responding to. Jessica, did you wanna chime in? Yeah, thanks. Um, I thought maybe it would be helpful if Tara, you could remind us of what the different options were. Cause I thought at the beginning you said there was one to, one option to go ahead and approve everything with possible changes. Was that true? Yes, I said that the options conclude, um, but there could be more. Um, um, approving the recommended list of words and languages. Um, another option would be approving the recommended list of words and languages with additions that are made through a friendly amendment. Um, and then I said at that time, the, the third option would be to table this item till the next meeting. And then later I added a fourth option, which would be to separate the approval of words and languages. So a, a, a second motion could be made today um, or a friendly amendment could be made to approve words today and table the approval of languages to a future meeting once uh, additional information is, is brought to the committee. So, quick clarifying question. Uh, when we're looking at the languages of Santa Rosa, there are a number in green and then the two languages in blue at the bottom, we've got Southern Pomo and Coast Miwok. Um, would, if approving as read, would that include the addition of those two languages or what do I- Yes. I'm, yes. The, the recommendation is to approve all of the languages that are listed there on that slide. Okay. If, if you approve, if we approve the words, just the words, does that help the artist in the process? I mean, does that gain anything for them or did, I don't think it does. does Not it? really, no. I mean, yeah. she, would, she still can't do her final design layout with all of the, essentially you have to think of all of the words and all the translations. Right as design elements and she has to place them all on right. a, a rendering of the piece covering all the surface area calculating the size calculating all the different translations will be in the writing systems of those languages and so the different um uh, the different uh fonts required and all of that has to be um, designed, have to be designed. Yeah, so that it doesn't really get us, gain us anything. Just no, and it. in the in the scope of things, I mean, I, I, I understand the desire to keep this moving as quickly as possible, right, and, and not delay further. Um, in the scope of all of the delays we have, this one is probably going to cause less delay than like COVID overall, for instance, or fires or other kinds of crises that we've dealt with. So um, I just want to give the committee the time if there's hesitation um, and a desire to take more time to do this, that, you know, there is not some looming deadline by which we have to complete this or we lose our chance to do it. We have, we have some flexibility there. It's just a matter of 
uh, I, I would I would say communicating with the community on what the expectations are so that people know that it is still coming. Because I don't I don't I'm sorry Nathan go ahead. <laughs> uh, no yeah you could uh, this I can I, the only thing I I'm thinking about is how do you open this up again I mean you know if you go down that road of yes we're going to add in. Um, Hebrew, Russian, Japanese, I think there were five others. How, you know, how, how are you going to do that? And who's going to say that we're not going to be in the same boat in a month when we vote again because some other group is feeling that they were left out? I, I just, I don't see an end to this. I, I totally understand that um, that kind of um, thought or fear that that may happen. What I what I would say is that um, as the initial kind of reasoning behind the selection of these languages were to equitably represent the mm -hmm. most commonly spoken language in San Rosa, it did leave out other important languages to San Rosa's history or Mm -hmm. our cultural traditions. So that, that's what I would say is that it does give us, I, I don't anticipate opening up any other public, widespread public outreach regarding adding languages to this list. What I would suggest is that at a staff level and through targeted outreach, we can come up with another filter of looking at important languages that should be included on this piece and bring that information to the committee so that then you can, you can decide um, what to include. And if, if um, because Vice Chair uh, Jones Carter, I 100% hear you, and this is why the list is what it is. It does not take into consider religion or it doesn't mm -hmm. take into, consider, into consideration other things, um, you know, such as that. Um, so if, if we do open it up, it would be incredibly helpful for the, um, for the committee then to say, okay, these are the kinds of things that we're thinking about. I mean, because otherwise it's like, to your point, we're back to the same place. It's staff deciding an arbitrary thing like, uh, um, and I'm hesitant to use language because I know that some people, it might be, uh, you know, more personal or concerning to some people, but say, you know, it's this religion, but not this religion or this culture and not this culture. Um, and, um, to your point, you know, the staff certainly doesn't want to be back in that same um, same place. Um, so the list that we provided is safe. Um, but if we do go back and consider it, what are we considering? Yeah. What are your recommendations for us to consider as a group? Oh, Nathan, go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering if we have a methodology established for proofreading in the various languages that are going to be in the sculpture. Or is that on the artist? No, we have used a translation service that the city okay. has a contract okay. with to make sure that native speakers are doing all the translations. We're not relying okay. on any kind of automated Google translation service or anything. So. Cool, thanks. Clarifying question I had. Um, if we were to consider the addition of another language, would all 15 words be necessary for reproduction? Or do you think that there's an opportunity to select maybe five words that could be reproduced in multiple languages? Um, just thinking of the space that there is on the piece and how we have been told that it would be impactful for there to be more opportunities for repeated words. Um, just thinking of the opportunity to represent additional languages, but also to um, keep the piece uh, or, or to kind of think about how the end product will look. Um, I feel like that gets into a lot of arbitrary um, decision making. However, I do think that that's a, um, a consideration that could be discussed by the committee if we come back to you at the next meeting with additional 
um, layers of information about uh, language representation. Um, and perhaps through whatever additional data we can find, it will make sense to have certain languages represented by certain percentages on the piece based on the population that speaks it. Or I don't, there's a variety of ways you can carve, carve all of this up, obviously. Um, and I think that if there was additional time, I think that that's something that we could provide some options for you to consider, um, not necessarily recommending one language be less represented than others, but at least providing you with some statistical data data that would that, that could help steer that discussion. And, and our interest as staff is to, to retain the integrity of the process. Um, so that it is not scuttled at the, um, you know, at the end with sort of new ideas. So if, if you do make those recommendations, how do we um, ensure that we're retaining the integrity of the process? <clears throat> okay, so uh, consideration, we still have the original motion on the table, which was to approve as written is there um, any entertaining of an alternative method that they would like to pursue with this? Or are we... Um, if there's no other motion or friendly amendment being proposed, then I think the action would be to call a vote on that original motion. So we could put a motion out while the other motion's sitting there. I don't really know the correct. Person. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can either do a totally new motion or you can um, ask for a friendly amendment, which the um, vice chair who made the uh, the motion could either accept or reject. Okay. Um, and if she accepted, then we would vote on the friendly amendment. If she rejects it, then you'd have to go through the vote of the vice uh, as, as it's on the, on the floor. Okay. Could I make a motion for a friendly amendment that we approve the word list and ask the staff to re-examine the process of finding those languages and we can look at that in light of some other ones that have been proposed. If we want to accept it, we, we can just delay this vote. I'm not saying that I wouldn't still go with it. Is that clear? Not really. So the motion is to uh, is to approve the uh, words only and to review the list of languages uh, at at the um, at an upcoming meeting. Um, but then um, we would also need the criteria in which to. Right. Yeah, that's what I've done. Um. Just point of clarification. Mm -hmm. Have the have. Um, is the meeting the guests at the meeting today? Is that the um, the requests that have been made to alter the language? Is that the only instance of requests being made to alter the language? Yes. Um, there, there were, I believe, six emailed comments that were attached to the agenda, oh, okay. um, along with the public comments that we heard today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Just further clarification: how many how many how many people participated in the original survey process? To gather words, uh -huh. about four hundred. Yeah. The languages, I should say, were not. We didn't receive widespread public input on the selection of languages. It was mm -hmm. the advisory group. Um, that met regarding how to do this engagement, how to collect words, how to identify representation of the community. It was that group that saw the list of frequently used languages here in Santa Rosa and, and approved that and then added the Southern Pomo and Miwok to the list. So there, there wasn't, I mean, 
there, if you're trying to consider public input level, um, there was not a huge public input request for the languages. It was a staff and community advisory group discussion on the, how to um, best represent the diversity of Santa Rosans. <clears throat> I, I just want to make another statement, just to, uh, just a comment. I still don't feel that adding these six or whatever, if we took a moment to really decide at the six, if, even if we didn't add them 50 times or whatever time everything else was, is taking away from the other words. I, I feel like the addition could only be an expanse of, of the arms around the community. It, I and I don't think that's the question. Okay. The question is, what is it taking away from other people who have not had right. the no, Okay, yeah, no, I was just adding another comment. So I'm not allowed to talk about that right now. I get it, okay. Sorry. No, you can. I just want to make clear that the, the, the concern from staff is not, is not that. It's, it, our concern is who has access yes. or knowledge to add things. So it's yeah. not that adding it, where does it stop? I think that, that yeah. is the crux of the question wow. that came up earlier. Okay, yeah, and I, I respect that too. So I'm not trying to come over the top. It just, that's kind of my gut of it. It was like, can we just include everyone? And maybe that's really not in light of, I understand things can get way out of control and not be equitable and to set a bad precedent and all those kind of things. But on the other hand, I kind of feel like there's room and um, how could we make this more equitable and expand a bit, but it, I'm, I'm trying to do a lot at one time. I'm, I'm realizing I'm not making it black and white, so. To be oh, fair, it's not very black. It's difficult. It's difficult. I know, but it's stopping yeah. voting. So I guess I, I would just bring us back to, it, it does sound like, Anne, you provided a suggestion for a friendly amendment to the motion mm -hmm. to approve the words today and save the languages to another meeting. Right. on the approval of languages to another meeting. So I, so the criteria, which I, I didn't have, I don't have a criteria that I felt like I could really put out right now because I don't feel like I totally understand how it, it was selected. And I mean, I do, but I just don't know if this would be, Nathan, please take it away. I, I, <laughs> I just want to be clear. All of the submissions were uh, were made in English. Were there any requests for, uh, you know, non-English languages to be represented? Like, like, was that, is that something that anyone attached to their submission, or is that a purely editorial decision on the part of the staff and the artist? Uh, no, the all of the outreach that we did was intended to gather words for the piece in english in any language uh -huh. we were very clear that submissions could be put to us in any language i think we uh -huh. only received a handful of spanish uh, entries the rest were submitted in english gotcha. okay. um the suggestion or or i should say the desire of the artist of the advisory group of all of the different planning bodies that have been a part of this project um, to uphold the original goals of the project to represent Santa Rosa's diversity um, and innovation and to be a symbol for all community members. That was has been a major part of all of the planning and, um, and has yeah. been a big uh, kind of justification for the types of outreach and um, recommendations we have made with this project. And so in conversation with the advisory group, it was determined that wouldn't it be a great way to showcase Santa Rosa's diversity to honor all the different um, community members that live here by representing the languages that they speak. And so that's where that came from that wasn't driven by the artist but obviously she wanted it to be a, mm -hmm. a main part of her project her other artworks that are very similar to what unum will will end up looking like have she's done this before mm -hmm. she gathers she works with the community she gathers words and languages trans does the translations and puts them on the piece so this was obviously what she had in mind for the 
for the piece mm -hmm. um, and what I think the selection panel and the community responded to when she was selected as the, the artist for this piece. Um, I think that when approaching how to decide what languages to, to use, it was, it was really just, well, how do we determine uh, what languages are spoken here? And so we went to the data and the data pointed us in the direction that ended us up making this recommendation. That doesn't mean that that's the only way to look at the question or this information. And so I think that that is where we are right now, that if there's a desire to look at it differently, it would be helpful to know through what lenses you would like us to bring back information through, from, right? So is it, is it cultural groups? Is it religions practiced right. in Sonoma, Santa Rosa? Is it, um, <laughs> is it not, you know, or what are the next, if you'd rather just go back to the data, what are the next five languages that are on that list rather than yeah. what are the next five most common and see what those are? Like th there's, that's the type of stuff that we could really use your input on if there's a desire to, to wait on the languages and have us bring back more information. I, that was very helpful. Thank you. I, 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 my inclination is to move forward with the process. I, you know, I think this is, I think if, well, yeah, my inclination is to move forward. I do. I'm moving that way. I, I, I don't see taking this over and, and, burrowing a new plow through another field that we're going to upturn languages in some other way. I just don't think that's our work. So I'm, I, can I ask the staff, do you feel comfortable with the vetting process for the languages Does, in hearing comments and coming around? Do you have a sense of this could stand and be solid for you? Um, it's a hard question to answer. I think that I, I stand behind the original data that we gathered and that a line is drawn where we said, what are the top 15 languages spoken? That that data is, is true and I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that data. However, I don't think that it is always a complete picture of our community. And so my, if you want my personal Two cents here. I would say that I I would take the time to look at it from a few different um, from other perspectives and gather more information and bring it back. I, that that's my personal mm -hmm. thanks feeling. I had another clarifying question. Um, <clears throat> When we see our list of languages, there are a couple languages that have a couple dialects or, or sub um, sub dialects within them. Uh, for example, Chinese includes Mandarin and Cantonese. Uh, I am curious: would each of those languages be represented represented equally, um, or would it kind of be an aggregate of? Um, I, I I might be getting too pedantic with this, but uh, I'm, I'm just curious on how the artist intended to represent multiple dialects within one language. We are still working with the translation service to make sure that they can provide all of the dialects listed. They've already confirmed Cantonese and Mandarin. So those would be equally represented as two separate languages on the piece. Um, and then similarly for every other one, as long as there's a native speaker translation that can be done. Um, yeah, D does staff, uh, do you have the sense that you could um, engage in the kind of audit that you're talking about of, of the process uh, without a formal, uh, friendly amendment to Joan Carter's motion, Jones, to Vice Chair Jones Carter's motion? Am I making sense? Like well, if, if you if could do what you're talking about without a formal st structure through this, the process that we're engaged in now. Well, if her motion is not amended and mm -hmm. it's approved as is, then I think that that's, that's where it ends, right? 
because there wouldn't necessarily be a desire to add more languages if it's approved. Right. So I'm not so quite understanding. Right. So my, I believe what the process is, is um, uh, vice chair, uh, you would have to uh, either accept or reject member Baumgartner's uh, uh, friendly amendment. If you reject it, then it goes to vote on your standing um, uh, motion. And if that fails, then a new motion is brought up. Uh, and, um, and then that motion comes to a vote. Do we have to, does the friendly amendment have to be second? Um, I, I think so. Yeah, you're saying yes, Tara. Yeah, I believe that, that Nathan, because he seconded the original motion has to also agree to the friendly amendment. I would agree to that. I would agree to the friendly amendment. And then, so the question is, Vice Chair, uh, do you um, accept that friendly amendment? And if not, then we vote on your on the amendment as it is, I mean, on the um, motion as it is. And no. um, if that does not pass, then we go to the second, okay. No, we should vote. Okay, so then we're, at this point, then we're voting on uh, Vice Chair Jones-Carter's uh, motion. And only if that, if that passes, then that's that. If it does not pass, then a new motion is, um, is uh, put forward. Is set forward. Correct. By somebody. Okay, at this and time. Before you, I think, um, member, uh, as Darren had another question, if push comes to shove and, and we are not given, um, uh, and Tara, this is a little bit on, uh, you know, winging it a little bit, um, you know, I think what we would do is talk with our equity officer and talk with our, um, our public health planner who's looking at uh, data on um, between those two, um, we would probably rely on data that they have and then bring forward something on terms of languages to see if they're right, if we're in the right path or not. Um, but I don't think staff would, uh, short of uh, the way in of those expertise, the expertise of those two people, I, I have to say, I don't, we could have a conversation on it, but we would have to have some kind of formal thing in which, in which we understand what we're proposing to you. Um, if the vote um, doesn't happen that way, if that makes sense. Um, so sorry, Chair Kiefer, um, I'll let you call the vote now. That is all right. Thanks for clarifying. At this time, I will call a vote for the original amendment, or sorry, for the original motion uh, to approve the recommended words and languages to be included in UNAM's design for the imagined for the Imagine Art in Courthouse Square Public Art Project. Eileen, will you take a roll call? Yes, Chair Kiefer. Aye. Vice Chair Jones Carter. Aye. Member Baumgartner. Nay. Member Adzerian. Aye. The motion carries um, with a, a vote of uh, three to one. Okay, you guys, good job. If we could just take a moment, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, uh, from my perspective of watching you guys grow, um, it is your conversation now. This is the conversation that we should carry forward in our next programs in advance. And I think this is an idea of the value of this group. Um, and the value of your perspectives. And I think, um, I know I, and I don't wanna speak for uh, Tara and Jessica too much, but um, I definitely learned from this and from the concerns that you brought up. And I think, um, I think, I hope that you all feel enabled for future discussions on uh, when we bring these things forward. And as we're considering this in a new way, uh, these project, public projects in a new way. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for yeah. being open about your thoughts on things. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of challenging to do in this format. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's really valuable. I, I really appreciate the space to process in the discussions. And thanks for listening and letting me not be able to finish thoughts. But it's helpful. I, I echo 
uh, sentiments from Raisa and Nathan and Anne. Thank you guys for, again, being open to an honest and um, vulnerable conversation. Uh, we don't we don't always know how to proceed and getting assistance from staff helps us kind of formulate how to uh, think holistically about uh, what we're having a conversation about. Yeah, this, this made me think about um, projects moving forward and um, the, our, our involvement in the, in the process when things are being set up, but not necessarily just on the, the final end of it. So um, moving forward, we might have some more questions. So um, to kind of eliminate some of the unknown parts of the process. So. so that's our charge. <laughs> well, and on that note, I would like to close this item 4.1 Unum. Uh, checking in with staff, I don't see any other items on our agenda today other than announcement for our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is February 2nd, sorry, February 7th. And I greatly appreciate everyone's ability to speak up and to offer space for listening. Um, thank you everyone. And with that, I adjourn today's meeting. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.